we can move on to session one where we're covering the journey from the big picture to the benthic image reaction plan to um, big picture groups to project working groups. Um, so presenting for this session is Henk van Rijn, who I'm sure many of you have already worked for, but if you haven't, um, Henk is a marine ecologist with JNCC, where he's been designing, conducting and analysing data from benthic mon monitoring surveys in offshore MPAs for the past five years. He specialises in hard substrate ecology and uh, studied using still and video imagery. And for the last two years, he's been focusing on improving collaboration across organisations, working with benthic imagery, culminating in the development of the UK Benthic Imagery Action Plan and the formation of the Big Picture Group. So yeah, he'll be talking us through the development of the action plan and the formation of the big picture group and its subsequent project working groups and looking ahead into the future. In, in the next hour, I, I aim to provide us with uh, an overview of everything that we've done collectively as the big picture group for the last two years. Um, and uh, we're I'd like to kind of pause for, for thought, for ideas as we go along. So um, I'll bring a thing up to discuss three kind of broad things. The something called the UK Benthic Imagery Action Plan. If you've not heard of it or not worked with it before, don't worry. Um, I'll cover that now. Next thing, if you've not heard of the big picture group either, don't worry about that. I'll explain what that is and how that's been formed. And finally, another term that we we'll use a lot. And notice we like acronyms a lot here. <laughs> the project working groups, PWGs. Um, what are these? And I'll discuss what those are and what they do um, going forward. So first of all, let's tackle this first one, the Benthic Imagery Action Plan. So this is Initially, the discussions for this have been very, very long in the tooth. They've been going on for ages and ages. And some of the initial thinking behind this, you can sort of summarize through through this slide um, by looking at this slide that um, really from JNCC's point of view, um, you know, up, up to 38 percent of the of, of the UK waters um, uh, of UK's uh, waters are designated as a marine protected area. Uh, uh, and you know, two fifths of that network of uh, MPAs, they harbor reefs or hard substratum habitats or sensitive habitats where you do not want to drop a grab sampler um, um, or a trawl or anything like that. So. They're best surveyed using cameras. They're some of the most biodiverse habitats we've got. Um, they have numerous valuable ecosystem functions that 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 are that are you know, great ecologically. Um, uh, another thing is that organisations like JNCC and other um, statutory nature conservation bodies. It's another acronym. Um, they they extract the the biological evidence data that they need to report on the condition, the quality of those MPAs from the imagery and the stills data. Now, Hank. here's where we get the problem. Oh, yes. Hank, sorry, could I just suggest yes. you maybe pop your video off just because your sound and uh, the actual quality of the slides being a bit fuzzy for us. Oh, sure, sure, sure. No problem. Yeah. Um, thank you, Kirsten. Uh, if that happens again, um, I'll see what else I can turn off on the computer. Yeah. OK. Um, when when it comes, our problems begin when it comes to even thinking about the camera system. There are stills, there are video systems, and there are numerous types of both. Then there's how you put them together in a rig. Then there's actually sampling at sea, uh, whether you are a diver, whether you are a deep sea researcher. Um, uh, sort of uh, the application of your equipment at sea, um, taking an account of variable um, sea states and the surface conditions, um, uh, turbidity in the water, a whole bunch of variables there that do affect the image quality and the nature of the of the of the product that you get at the end of that. 
Can I pause a second, Kirsten? Are the slides a bit clearer now? Um, I'm not sure if I'm maybe getting a lag. I'm not seeing any text or anything on it, but my Teams has been playing up a bit as well. So. Okay, okay, that's grand. Um, th there isn't any text, so so, oh, right, so that's okay. that's uh, fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no worries, no worries. Good. Okay. Um, uh, next next up is 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 actually recording your imagery. There are many different ways that the imagery data can be stored. Um, when you are acquiring, like physically actually taking the photograph, you know, diary is when you pull the trigger. Uh, when you're working on offshore survey methods, often when you click the mouse. Um, but um, water turbidity um, can affect the quality of the image, whether the whether the camera is stable, whether it's rolling around, moving around, that will affect the image. It will blur it, perhaps. Um, there are issues at that end of things. Um, and then when it gets to the image that you have acquired, you know, if all of those factors have worked in your favor and you've got something semi-decent that you can work from, you then have to think about how do you extract the information from that image? Do you um, count everything, even when it's a colonial organism? Do you estimate the, the percentage cover? Um, uh, how do you do that? And how do you do that in a way that's robust and transferable across other studies as well? Um, uh, this is an example of where we tried different um, approaches and the results came out showing that everything was different. So more on that on, um, on day two. Then eventually you put all the information together into reports through analysis, um, you come up with interpretations of that and the variability in how you do that as well. And this is all before it ends up in a database. Now at the database end, the formats and structures are, are fairly standardized, but what I'm saying is the imagery, the actual data is not. And there's huge variability there. And so putting all of this together, I think we all know what this means, you know, um, and, 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 and why this is a huge problem. Um, we thought let's let's deal with this, and that's what happened two years ago. Um, you know, um, a large group of us got together uh, to discuss images and the everything in that pipeline from uh, acquisition right the way through what you do with the image to processing and then um, your products at the end. And it was a very interactive workshop. Uh, we had, I mean, it was, it was, um, it was, it was very engaging. There was an awful lot of information that was generated um, through through little ideas noted down on post notes, through sort of bigger ideas discussed in groups, and through through the process, we we were able to um, generate a huge amount of information which needed to be uh, processed further to make sense of it. Um, so the, the first thing that happened was we collated things into a report. If you've not had a chance to read that, the link along the bottom there, this is a um, summary report of um, the workshop uh, two years ago. It's a transcript really. Um, but like I said, we needed to go a little bit further. And this is where we was very lucky to work with um, a few individuals from across across that workshop. We we together um, formed a group called Plan Development Group, uh, which uh, um, uh, worked to take those post-it notes and transform that information into something that we could all um, work uh, with going forward. And uh, initially, things were broken in to, to broad groupings. Uh, and you can see those broad groupings on your screen here. Um, now, within those broad groupings, we were able to take problems with imagery work and synthesize solutions, possible solutions, ways of going forward. And those were formed, and those and those are called tasks. And so, within each of these groups, these broad groupings, there were clusters of tasks. And so, all together, eighty-seven of these tasks clustered into the seven themes. Um, if, if any of you have not seen this diagram before, um, don't be alarmed. It's, uh, it's, um, 
it's simple uh, in some ways. Um, you can see the the seven broad groupings um, across the image on your screen, and you can see within that you can see the little tasks. And so this this is a, a diagram flowchart of the of the tasks in the Benthic image action plan, and uh, how the tasks flow into each other, but also how they're interrelated across those groupings. So. Let's chat about the tasks a second. Um, we agreed in the group that the tasks can be related to one another. They can have dependencies. One task solves a problem, which can then help another task, which can then solve a problem and help another task and so on. So there can be a sequential nature, but also they can sort of work across the themes. Um, the tasks should have some sort of outcome or output at the end of them. Um, this is a way of sort of measuring that your task has has done something that has changed something. You can also have a priority score um, so that you can sort of rate rate the tasks going forward. Uh, and final note on the tasks from this action plan is that they vary in what they are. So some of them are a behavioral change. Um, others are, are 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 a project. They you know they lend themselves very nicely to a project, and others could be a cluster of projects. So it's more a task is sort of a cluster of uh, of ideas or a thing, a change that needs to happen. So we then put the tasks together. This is just a draft of the action plan as it was being developed, and it has aims, guiding principles, a way of working. Um, uh, and uh, like I mentioned, the themes and within those themes, details of each task and a little bit of um, information about um, what's required, what are the, what's what's the gist um, of, 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 of what is required to complete that task, the priority score and a suggested um, output from that. So at this point, um, it's worth sort of saying again, reiterating that that all of this came from the workshop. These were all ideas that people put out there that were just synthesized then into into these tasks. Um, so when brought together this action plan, it needed a scope um, uh, and sort of general bounds because it's a very large, potentially large reaching thing. Uh, wide reaching thing. So the first thing we did is we constrained it and focused it really for the marine biodiversity conservation community for the next five years. Now, this is um, uh, primarily focused at sort of government bodies in the UK that are responsible for reporting on uh, marine biodiversity. So, um, you know, and, and, and you know, that, that was one of, the, one of the main drivers behind this work. However, there were many other groups of organizations involved in this work, working in, in many in academia and many working, um, you know, through private consultancies. So, you know, although this work is focused on just this smaller um, community, I'd say the the work that's achieved here will be useful to everybody. Um, but we didn't want to make the scope everybody because because that's maybe too big a thing to take on. Um, right. Our, 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 our aims of this piece of work are improved quality and comparability of benthic imagery um, to incorporate advances, sort of new technologies as they come in. How do we shoehorn that into into more modern uh, work? And finally, to to improve the collaboration opportunities across organizations, especially when they're working on similar things, um, but um, not necessarily joined up or aware of what each other's working on. So. So far, so good. Um, we we worked with the Northeast Atlantic Marine Biological Analytical Quality Control Scheme, the NMBAQC, which um, is a, a, a standards uh, governance managing body um, that uh, sits in, in the UK. They sit under another working group called the Healthy and Biologically Diverse Seas Evidence Group. And all of this sits under the UK uh, marine Monitoring and Assessment um, Scheme, um, OCMAS. So 
we embedded the the imagery action plan under these structures so that it has a home it has a place that it, it, that progress can be reported to and a part of what we're doing this next couple of days this will all be um, reported to that group uh, those groups i should say finally um this is this is, it's been a pleasure working with everyone over this process even at this stage um, alone um there's been a real spirit of cooperation across the organizations in in this um in this effort and um the whole idea it's it's been very sort of um egalitarian and um uh, the sharing of resources solutions and opportunities um has been has been at the heart of um of a lot of the collaboration uh, I'll, I'll i'll touch on that more going forward the next um uh thing is um uh, embedding this um in a place where people can see it so it's all published on the nmbaqc website now um and uh, there's 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 a working group to to um uh implement the action plan and i i'll, I'll chat more about them in a moment um but it's just worth pointing out the moment this working group currently has 121 people from across 42 organizations uh, most in the uk but a few outside of the uk as well all with an interest in inventic imagery um, so this that is um that was our first year of working together that is where we got to and i think um, that's a good point for me to just pause and ask the group if they've got um, any questions or comments, please? Uh, you've had a couple of comments in the uh, in the chat, Hank, just regarding highlighting the import, um, the monitoring context of the work. Oh, great, great. Um, yes, I see now. Um, can I just ask Jen? Um, can I ask Jen Durden just to just to clarify about the monitoring the context of the work in terms of actual biodiversity monitoring or 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 actually monitoring the progress of our collaboration ah sorry i meant more like biodiversity given that it's set in the nmbaqc context and that regulatory context you know it probably doesn't apply to other type of work yes 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 thanks jen yeah I, um um, you know, as I mentioned about the scope of the work, it 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 sort of had to focus in on. Um, well, we focused it in on something, and you know, as Jen pointed out, um, uh, that it was focused really on the monitoring side of things um, under the NMBAQC. Uh, how, however, you know, it, it, there 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 are numerous other. Um, uh, tasks that that I'm sure we could think of that would be of benefit to other working communities, particularly in the research community, where you're really pushing the bounds of ideas and technologies, um, scientific robustness, all the validity of approaches. So there's 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 more than this um, definitely out there. Uh, but what we achieve with this should be transferable to other areas. Okay. Kirsten, if there aren't any more questions, I'll just move on. Yep, perfect. Yep. Okay. So let's let's talk now a little bit about the formation of of the big picture group. Okay. So um, it um, it began with the first workshop uh, two years ago, and there were many more people who wanted to come to the workshop than we had spaces for, unfortunately. So we 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 had to um, focus in on on giving um, the organizations interested in attending um, spaces, but we had to limit the spaces per organization. So we maximized the spread um, uh, across organizations and types of organizations um, strategically so that we would get a good flavor of what everyone thought and the different problems that people were encountering. Um, and also to get a, a real range of ideas. However, there were many people, like I said, who were not able to attend um, because of our limited spaces mostly. And so we wanted to make use of, 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 of the interest um, um, uh, of this other group. And so um, we, we kept a record of people's, um, of people's interest and through, 
through communication that continued after the workshop, we um, we we tried to keep people involved in the work. Um, pr firstly, by sharing the report that came from this work, but also periodically sort of updating people with information and sort of seeing if we could get people involved. Um, so what this has led to is um, uh, a, 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 like I had mentioned in a previous um, slide, 121 uh, uh, people who have agreed to be um, a part of this uh, group uh, across 41, 42 organizations. It does fluctuate as 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 new members can come in, and then and then you know you know as other members have maybe changed jobs or they're not um, you know or they're not working in in that area at the time, and so these numbers they do fluctuate, and that would be that would be the subject of another of another talk. It's quite interesting how it, how it's changed over time, but this is where we stand right now today, and you can see if you look at the blue the blue areas of this chart, these are these are your government. Um, funded bodies, and some of them are more sort of research focused, and some are more sort of environmental protection, fisheries focused, and some are more sort of biodiversity conservation focused. Um, and uh, they almost form; it's almost a, uh, it's almost a third, maybe slightly more than a third of the group. And then at the bottom, if we continue to wheel round, you see we've got a split of of sort of independent consultants, your freelance consultants. And then sort of um, consulting organizations uh, that can be quite large, um, uh, but then could also just be made up, you know, you know, of a team of a few individuals. And um, and in amongst there's um, a hardware developer as well. And so, you know, within within this sector of the group, you have um, you know people who are working uh, private sector functions. Um, you know, contributing to reports, carrying out surveys, working with sort of oil and gas industry and wind. Uh, you know, it, there's there's um, it's essentially private sector, if I could summarize it that way. Um, uh, not quite a third, but, you know, that's it, it's still a big slice of 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 this pie, about a quarter. And then and then the other the other bit of the greens here you see made up clearly of sort of two of two distinct areas, um, two distinct types of organizations. Your universities here, down here, and some universities are very involved, and then um, of independent marine research institutes, and some of those are very involved as well. So you have um, a, a very um, large uh, proportion of the group made up with people working in research, research in academia and um, teaching and training students and bringing on all the next um, uh, wave of sort of people working with imagery and, in, you know, and interested in imagery. And what I really think is fantastic um, about this group is this spread. There is such a spread um, um, of people. So let's, um, let's, let's now chat about, about this group of people and how do we get them all to work together? We, you know, what mechanisms can we can we use and apply? And one of the things we thought, seeing as every organization will have a slightly different way of operating, um, what we needed to agree was some sort of standard um, terms of reference, um, uh, an agreement, really. Um, and um, so we fleshed this out, and we passed this around the around members of the group, and you know. In, uh, they had details like, you know, the history of the process. Um, what is the purpose of this group? What What is it meant to do? Um, the scope. Um, you also had um, membership. Now, this this is a this has become a really interesting area that uh, we have we have sort of drilled into a bit. And and you know, not not everyone in this group will have all their time to contribute to this collaboration. I mean, very very few, in fact. And but there are others who the who who the work um, um, the work aligns with their work very very well, and so they will be more actively contributing and participating simply because their work already includes that. And so you've got this division then, this split between active members and passive members. Now passive members are kept involved with all the processes, and 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 the information, um, and. 
and uh, your active members are sort of more involved and engaged. They're they're a step more where they're they're actually working together in groups and trying to sort of seek funding to to carry out work um, collaboratively as a group. Um, so with with this in mind, now you need we needed to think about how how does this group uh, work together, like physically work together and communicate with one another. And um, I'll have to I'll, 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 I've got two points there on on action plan coordination, but I'd like to say about um, uh, actual uh, on online collaboration has been um, has been essential for for nearly all of our communication, probably across all of us for the better part of of the last year of our lives um, uh, uh, but due to due to the global pandemic. And so um, um, when we set up a, a, a Microsoft Teams um, space and 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 gave people access to that, this provided a means where people could share information uh, and be connected. And and it's 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 sort of um, it's gone through waves of um, changes as you know as teams have uh, you know been updated, um, and and also not everyone has been able to access it. So there have been I, I, like I won't say it's been plain sailing with connecting people up, um, but we've always sort of tried tried the best way of sort of balancing communications um, and focusing the majority of it within Microsoft Teams. And I think um, you know. Uh, the fact that we're all meeting on Teams right now shows you that um, this collaboration platform has has uh, so far proved to be uh, probably in the majority of occasions a success. Um, uh, so, going back to our action plan coordination, um, we we sort of broke things up into different uh, roles and groupings, and we could talk about these things another time, but. Essentially, um, uh, I have been performing a role of a coordinator, trying to uh, sort of bring people together and sort of move things around and so on. Um, uh, but um, going forward, this this group needs something needs something better than you know one person who's running around trying trying to connect things up. You know, it it, it needs something that's that's more balanced, that uh, that has a better governance structure and and is more representative of like of that group. So if we, I mean, if we if if we go back a second to our pie chart, you see, wouldn't it be great getting a representative of each one of these different sort of types of organisations and getting them representation on this group? So that's that's exactly what that's exactly what we've done, um, uh, and uh, you know we're, we're sort of still looking for one or two representatives to sort of balance things out, but we've nearly got um, a full spread, and so. This group will will act as the overall sort of governance and coordination for this big picture group going forward. Um, so this 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 these were all ideas that we were working out over basically over the winter. Um, finally, the terms of reference, we had to have a means of contact, sort of group contact, and then you know obviously a few references. So after discussing this and going through numerous iterations, um, we agreed. We agreed on 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 the first version of this terms of on on the terms of reference last november uh so thank you everyone on the call who was involved with that and um uh you know i'm i'm, I'm uh, you know like i'm really glad that we were able to flesh out a way of working there um this diagram we don't really need to go into this but it shows you the flows of information that that will um how things work in the big picture group. It was quite complex figuring it out. Here you have an organization that really has no sort of core central funding and has a group of, um, uh, made up of a group of individuals who have varying degrees of time and effort that they can put into this kind of effort. And, um, you know, time costs, of course. And so funds are needed at some point. Um, and so we needed to kind of come up with a model. That's exactly what this is. You know, this is a model that shows you where the active members sit, where the passive members sit, um, of where um, you have a project working group made up of individuals, and there's a lead within that group, and that project working group, they take on pieces of work, and the lead, they're probably the person who found the funding to, you know, to carry out the work, 
and they report to their funding body, of course, that's what you do. But then we were also asking that they would report to this central action plan coordination committee, this, this balanced group of individuals, you know, that I mentioned. Um, and, you know, within that group, you have, um, you have this coordinator at the center of it, who, who, who sort of convenes the group, bring them together, and um, other uh, project working groups come in and they share information with each other. Um, and uh, but they they in turn will need a funding body that they will report to, particularly the action plan coordinator. Um, so you have these meetings of this coordination committee. They meet, they share all the progress going across that group. They make any decisions as a group that need to be made, and then this information filters back down again. So it filters, as you see the little blue arrows, it filters to the rest of the big picture group. Um, who can be kept abreast of the changes. Uh, if any of them want to start working in projects, you know, they can get more active, sort of get more involved in projects. Um, also, this coordinator role, they have to report to the NMBAQC, as I said, in the governance structure and um, uh, the HEBSEG group as well. Um, so um, I... I uh, I didn't want to touch on that for too long. Um, sort of, it, it, it's uh, you know, it's 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 something that we agreed as a way of working in the terms of reference. Um, and uh, yes, um, just to give you a little look at the the big picture site that has been that that has been used um, uh, by the group, sort of periodically. Um, you know, you can sort of post information on there, like in a social media kind of way. You can also save files. You can share updates with each other. Uh, there are also sort of um, channels where you can organize your information. Um, it is possible going forward. You could have a channel, a uh, separate sort of work area theme for every project working group, you know, and they could submit information into there. Um, one of the things about this group is we're, we're not we're not sort of, um, you know, we're not sort of we're asking the group what they prefer as a way of working and trying to figure out ways to make that possible across the rest of the group. So it's really, we're very appreciative of people's time to, to help with this collaboration effort and to, to contribute in a way that they can. And so we have to be flexible. Sometimes that involves using Teams, posting information. Um, uh, you know, there are uh, options to sort of organize meetings, to chat, to use calls. Uh, and other, other times people will, people will choose other, you know, like other means of communication. Um, so really, I think I think that's all I've got for us on 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 the formation of the big picture group. Um, I just just um, just pause again for any questions on that group that anyone has, um, especially um, uh, uh, you know for anyone who's not in that group who might be sort of curious about it. Um, now is a good chance for me to just share a little bit more about that if you'd like. I, I I I have a general question then for anyone on the group, um, anyone in the you know in our in our in our session here. If if um, if if anyone is aware of uh, of other other groups that run in a similar similar way, it might be interesting to get a list of similar groups that are cross organisation and function, but also work to deliver sort of. Um, uh, uh, work tasks, work packages that have um, that have a common common benefit. Um, uh, uh, it would be interesting, maybe if you could pop pop some some of those groups in into the into the chat box. Um, you know, I I understand uh, some of the ICs working groups operate in a similar way. Um, you know, so th that could be an example. It, I, I'd just be interested to see to see what sort of groups we're aware of that function function in similar ways. Aid Waitman's mentioned the IC's working group for Nefrox TV surveys. Yeah, I think that working group they they develop common standards, isn't that right, Aid? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay. The IC's working group, Clive Fox has mentioned the IC's working group on vulnerable marine ecosystems as well. 
Yeah, I think so far it does seem, um, I know there's a benthic habitat group as well. Um, so there are similarities, similarities in these approaches. And um, it could it could be quite interesting going forward, you know, whether whether um, whether or not, you know, this group, as it begins to overlap with with some of the other groups functions, whether or not the um, linkages need to be made there. And it is something that was mentioned in a workshop we had earlier on this year. Um, and it did it um, there did seem a lot of support for that approach of making linkages with other groups um, in order to sort of spread not only spread the work out but better join things up a um, number of other other ideas come forward uh, um, ICs uh, working for, for marine habitat mapping Maori map from Alison Benson it's quite similar um, Graham Duncan the Medin Medin data standards you know, building the working group on deep water ecology. So, um, I wonder. Excuse me. I wonder as a as a future as a future um, you know future opportunities global global outreach opportunities whether there's something in there for expanding out to these other groups. Um, Fathom that, Chris McGonigal's just pointed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the radar, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's good. Yes, um, we'll touch on a little bit of FathomNet in tomorrow's s s session three. Right, Kirsten, if it's OK, I'll just move on to the final bit. Yep, all good. Yep, OK, thank you. Um, so um, initially, um, the, the Benthic Image Reaction Plan published an approach for how how we could work together, actually physically work together on projects. And it consisted of sort of three levels of groupings. One was, um, you know, you, the person who wants to do the work. The second level was the action plan coordinator. And the third level was the wider big picture group. And we don't need to go into this diagram here. I wanted to just, I wanted to refer to it, that it that it's not something um, that we hadn't thought about. We, we, we have sort of had, have had this in mind all along, but but as time's gone on, of course, um, things haven't gone quite according to how we envisaged. And so the way of working that we've gone forward um, uh, is actually quite interesting and in how it was set up. And so it's worth sharing a little bit with with you all about about how we went from having the big picture uh, workshop and then developing a benthic image reaction plan out of that and setting up uh, a working group. Um, now all of that happened in about a year, a year and a half or so. Um, the action plan in the year, the working group following that, and this final six months has really been the next step. So um, it's about implementation of this action plan. And so the first the first thing, there are a number of key points to have in mind here, right? The first one is that it's carried out by organizations across the big picture group. It need not be exclusively the big picture group, but having, having them all sort of loosely bound together in a rough framework should facilitate any sort of group working. And so that's the first sort of thing. The second thing about this um, is you need to identify kind of a, a central coordinator and and then um, to to set up some sort of task tracker for the benthic imagery action plan tasks. And so we were we were able to secure a role for that um, uh, uh, taken up by myself. And we were able to uh, set up a task tracker spreadsheet to carry out the work. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. The third thing that we needed was to agree mutually beneficial ways of working and taking this spirit of cooperation that I mentioned a little bit ago, keeping that going forward, but um, enabling it through having some sort of means of collaboration and also sort of a working approach 
And that was sort of set up by having our terms of reference and agreed ways of working, which which are agreed across that group. So these with these three things in place, um, uh, the first um, the first thing that 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 we realized that should be point four, by the way, um, <laughs> uh, that is um, is that we want to shift away from sort of central facilitation to to really sort of autonomous groups that or semi autonomous groups that are able to work amongst themselves and work together, um, but, you know, share information centrally so that everybody can benefit uh, 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 by that uh, from that. And so up until this point, um, uh, a lot of a lot of bringing things together was 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 brought together by our action plan coordinator. But as time goes on, this is all going to be s sort of spread out across the action plan coordination committee. And so with with these four pieces in place, um, there are two sort of ways that that um, that we can crack on with stuff, you know, uh, uh, sort of a passive implementation and an active implementation. And I'll I'll explain a little bit about those now. So first of all, this is a picture of um, a blowing up section of the action plan and the tasks inside and uh, the tasks linking up and flowing all together. Now, an example of passive implementation happened, uh, as you see, with task 45 that is circled in red and also um, crossed off. Um, by the time the action plan was published, um, this piece of work that that underpins task 45 had already been completed and published. And so in a way, this is the first the, this is one of the first tasks that has been completed. Um, and so um, you know a passive uh, way of ways of passively imp implementing tasks in the action plan is where any of us have already got work going on in a particular area that can fit into any of these tasks. Um, you know, once once the output is published, say, whether it be often in the form of like a report, you, you know, in your findings, when it's published, you can, um, you know, and shared, you know, then 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 in theory that that sort of blockage in these pipelines should it should be removed. And so, you know, the task is completed. So fitting our existing work to to these plans um, is one way of uh, doing that. That's that's, a, you know, that's an example of the study. Um, a second way which which we've done um, a lot more of is actively actively engaging with the big picture group to try and um, bring things together in an organized way. So um uh the once you've worked out what everyone's up to what resources we have as a group um and time to take things forward the next step in that is to assemble sort of cross organization project working groups to tackle the tasks and it won't it's more than likely to be that you won't get just one task being tackled but a group of tasks and um, they can be bound together in a project. Um, now, once once you've got these project working groups assembled to tackle these tasks, um, uh, leave them for a bit to figure to figure a few things out, and then bring them together for for an event to share progress and to review that, um, and then periodically continue that. And so what? What we've what we've um, proposed and put together for for this uh, active impl implementation, which has largely happened over this um, over this last um, six months period, is to to populate an action plan tracker spreadsheet, uh, and then we we held a workshop in November um, uh, to to discuss bringing together those groups, and then finally this milestone event is is what we're all dialed in for now, you know, is bringing it together, seeing where we've got to now that we've got some project working groups. So I'll, I'll, I'll just go into a little bit more information about each of these steps now. So the first step at the action plan tracker spreadsheet, this is a, an example of the spreadsheet. Um, uh, you see down the left hand side, those are, your, those are your tasks, they're color coded 
for where they appear on the on the um, on the action plan. You've then got each task has a you know brief description what you're supposed to deliver and any outputs that are listed down there. Then you've got the actual information about the task development, and this is where we broke up. You know, is it was um, asking people for an expression of interest as to what tasks they'd like to be involved with. Um, you know, leading the task, collaborating, or being in the steering group. Um, and then finally, any additional useful information on that task can all be put together. But this task tracker was was sent out to um, uh, members of the big picture group, and uh, we've got numerous responses to populate it. The second thing is um, we scribbled all over our action plan to group together um, groups of tasks that 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 seem to fit together, that could be bound together in a project. And most projects, as we know, they have different objectives and they don't have different sort of work packages. And we thought like these groupings could form project groupings. And so it began with some scribbles and then we firmed things up a little bit and these became these actual um, groups. Now, these group ideas were, were, were discussed and um, uh, we asked people for sort of ideas on what these groups should uh, deliver, on how they could work together, on who would like to work in the groups. And we brought this all together in, in this November workshop. Um, uh, and of, 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 of these groups, um, uh, you can see um, more a point, a point for later on in the workshop different ones of these groups will be discussed in different sessions um, as we go on into the workshop. Um, so then taking the groupings and looking for who was interested in tasks, we managed to break that down. As you can see, there's not one group that had no interest from any organization in the big picture group. And so we we weren't stuck for choice of, of, of sort of people being interested in groups. I think more of the challenge is that not everyone has unlimited, well, no one has unlimited time. So, um, you know, it, it'd be a case of sort of juggling uh, organizations' effort that they spend on different project working groups going forward. Um, so this slide just gives you an example of, of, of the range of interests spread across the groups. Um, so as I said um, before, bringing people together to discuss things in a workshop was the next part of this plan. and. We got agreement on the groups, which was fantastic. Um, the only group we weren't really able to get, um, uh, the, the, the only group that we didn't have time to discuss was actually imagery technology reviews. There's a whole, there are a whole raft of um, tasks in the acquisition of imagery theme that uh, really need to be taken forward. But um, these other project working groups um, uh, were sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, more, they were they were easier things to tackle at the time. And so we parked the technology reviews. And so we will be touching on that in, in, in one of the later sessions in the workshop. Just to, I'll provide a rough overview of that uh, project working group area. But the main point is that we got agreement on every single one of these groups to have someone to act as a point of contact, not necessarily a lead, but just a point of contact going forward. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, there hasn't been much time between November and now, and things have been incredibly busy. And many of us have had to endure another lockdown at home, uh, managing our lives and our children and all of our other responsibilities. And so um, uh, all of our time um, has been um, constrained and very limited. So I, mean, I will stress that each one of these project working groups um, have the best intentions at heart, and some of them have been able to progress things a little bit further than others. And um, uh, what we're going to see over the next couple of days is just sort of a range of levels of development of these different project working groups. Um, and, you know, um, we're very fortunate to have uh, many of the representatives are able to attend the workshop and able to give us an overview of what those groups um, will be covering, uh, of of the work of the work they you know they'd like to take on and then sort of any ideas they have for funding and global outreach and all of that going forward. Um, so yeah, we can look forward to updates from all of these over the next couple of days. Uh, 
So finally, our, our event here today, bringing us all forward, this is really just the final bit of this, this um, year's um, uh, sort of uh, active um, implementation, really. Um, and um, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, it's not the end of the story, but it's, 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 it's a milestone, a point for pausing, taking a breath, looking around, seeing what we've achieved. And really, this, this whole thing is about to take off. Um, um, you know, now that people's project working groups are organized, you know, I see the next logical steps are to get funding and ways of working for these projects going forward. Um, but I think we have organized it as best as we can going forward. Um, uh, so just to give a rough summary then of, of, um, of everything I've discussed, uh, uh, well, you know, every, everything I've shared so far. Um, so four key points about, about, about this big picture work is, um, uh, you know, that I'd like you to bear in mind. One is that this is an active collaboration effort um, uh, across the UK to address benthic imagery issues. I'll also say that we also have, we're fortunate to have, you know, some members from, um, you know, from other countries and the Netherlands, um, you know, the Faroe Islands at some point, um, and a member in Nova Scotia as well, like, or is it Newfoundland? Um, so it is an active collaboration effort um, across many organizations. Uh, we're made up of 121 people at the moment from 20, you know, from 42 organizations and very, very sort of spread out across different working sectors. There are eight project working groups actively working to deliver this, um, to deliver this action plan. And finally, our workshop today aims to, aims to share the progress of these groups, but also to discuss, um, you know, funding routes, global outreach opportunities, and any sort of future challenges. So that's my summary uh, of progress leading up to now. Um, for any questions, uh, uh, I will take my screen off and I am free for questions. Kerry says, all very clear. Thank you, Kerry Howell. Um, there's, there's an awful lot of information there. <laughs> And you've all been fantastic um, listening to me for another good while. Um, uh, uh, most of that work is sort of you guys jumping in and sort of helping things move along. So I, I you know, I can't thank participants in that enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, everything um, sort of laid out laid out the process for the last while uh uh you know, there's no questions i guess that's a really good thing that's the, <laughs> that's um uh yeah, like shows we've covered a lot of ground uh joey's got his hand up at the moment i'm not sure all oh, right i can't see that oh, oh, oh yes joey i think it just um more, more a point just say i think we can um share all of the like the documentation that you referred to in the slide is up on the um either the website for this event or the and then the AQC um, page for the big picture work. So I think we can send links to that around to people as well so they can have a read of terms of reference and that if they if they'd like to. Great. Thanks, Joey. So um, going um, forward, it sounds like we haven't got any more questions, Kirsten. Um, or like our comments, so. Um, not I can see no. Oh, so without without any further ado, we we could probably close the session. I think. Nothing in the chat, Hank. Just. Okay, know. great. Um, let's close the session then.